and uh, I don't want to ski, but we got on in for the first time yesterday. Hello equestrians, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alyssa, I am on a quest to ride every breed, and in this episode, we are going to meet the largest horse breed in Australia, and it's one that you might not know about. There are hundreds of different horse breeds, and each one has their own unique story. So saddle up and join me on a ride to discover the horse. I'm heading to Marley Draft Horse Stud to meet the Australian Draft Horse and a family that is keeping history alive and carrying on the legacy of using horses for traditional farm work. Pretty much every horse you can see here is an Australian Draft Horse. I know it sort of seems funny that there's so many different colours going and so many different types of horses, but these are all Australian Draft Horses. There might be a couple in here which might remind you of other breeds. Yes. Uh, maybe rubble here might uh, trigger a Belgium sort of a style and behind there we've got that Suffolk. That's because the Australian draft horse, how it was created, it used all the major breeds uh, to combine to make what we think was the, the ultimate working horse in Australia. The Australian Draft Horse Stud Book Society was formed in 1978. Breed characteristics include minimal feathering on the legs, good hard feet, less white around their nose and eyes to help prevent cancers from developing, and a quiet, friendly temperament. Mares and geldings stand at 15-2 and above. Stallions have to be at least 16-2. When we breed our horses, they still get classified. So basically you've got three experts on the breed come and inspect the horse before he gets registered. That way we ensure that all the horses who are going into the society are fit to go into the society. We're trying to eliminate any defects coming into the breed. We want them to be pure. And we want them to be really sound working horses. And how many do you have now? Uh, I'd say we've only have <laughs> uh, Look, I'd say probably 40 to 50. 40 to 50, 40 to 50. Yeah, all right. Moment, yeah. You don't count, you don't feel as bad. Do you even remember a time without horses? Nah, no. Nah. No, not at all. No, it's uh, been a big part of my life, and yeah, I think uh, the kids will have the same thing. They yeah, go up with the, the reins in their hands. We actually, uh, in anticipation to you coming, <laughs> we picked one out for you. That's uh, <laughs> Will over there. That's Chelsea's horse, and uh, I don't want to ski, but we got on him for the first time yesterday. So, <laughs> 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 so yeah. Oh my gosh, I love it. Yeah, so, you're a good rider, right? <laughs> When they've worked in harness so much, you jump on them, they, it's just a different uh, different thing, but they're all pretty buzzed. But did you want to try something different first and maybe drive a team or something like that? I would love to. Yeah? yeah. We'll get a team of six. We've got a scarifying plough out the back there, oh um, so we can get you sitting on the seat of that and Sounds have a go amazing. at that. Yeah, cool. I love it. All right. Very good. Get up, Hank. Get up. Hank, get up. Come on, mate. Come on. Well. They're called a long straw collar, similar to the English collars. Okay. Um, Australia sort of adopted an English style. So like, like a saddle, the collar's got to fit the horse. Um, every, every horse has his own Pacific collar. So each, each bit of harness you can see there is particular for an individual horse, so they get fitted and as they grow and get bigger and older and fatter and skinnier, you, you have to adapt it every now and again. Sure. Make sure that they're comfortable. These are pretty young, these ones. Probably about four year old now, so they, so the front three of the leaders, um, they'll lead the team and then these guys who've, who've done a lot of work, mind you, but they'll, they'll <laughs> stomp along behind. Yep. Come here. Here, Clyde. Clyde. Get up, Hank. Hank. Whoa. 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 Yep. Lady. Whoa. Do you ever just go to work with one horse and you're like, oh, this is so boring? <laughs> ah, nah, not really. <laughs> Look, once you teach them 
one to six doesn't take much longer or eight or 10 or, or whatever you need to put in for the machinery. Righto, Hank, Will, together. Lady. <laughs> That's a lot of horses. A lot of horsepower, yeah. So traditional teams around farms would have been six, eight, ten horses. Like, depending on the implement, you know, uh, bigger implements need more horsepower to pull it. Sure. Um, we, we use six a lot. You can get a lot, lot done. It just gives them a purpose. Yeah. Uh, and it makes it, it makes it enjoyable too. Um, you know, being out there, if you're going to put hours and hours into them, it's nice to have a job to start and finish. Uh, so that way you don't have to sort of try and get yourself up to training them and, you know, daily. Uh, if you've got a job to do, it makes it a lot easier. Oh, for sure. You can imagine if, uh, like, right now, I'm driving the front three, I've got control of the front three, the back three, I don't actually have a rein on. Right. They're, they're tied in. So as long as my front three are going okay, <laughs> they've sort of got to walk along and go with the show. If the, if the front three... Uh, Sort of work going okay, we might be in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> but you've got to take you've got to take the good with the bad, I suppose. Horses are an animal, you know. You can't expect them to be like a tractor, turn a key on, and, and they're going to just do everything you want them to do. Uh, they'll have good days and bad days, uh, just like we do. Absolutely. So, you know. I think that's part of the charm about them, though. You know, you you learn so much about yourself when you're around horses. For sure. Take this back up here and we'll dump it at the end of the paddock. We've got that little machine over in the paddock there. Oh, yeah. We're going to ch transfer it over. Whoa. And whoa. We're back. We're back. we back, Will. We're back, Clyde. We're back. We're back. Whoa. These horses are so quiet. They know their jobs so well. It's just been amazing to see their understanding of their job and their role here on the farm. The other good news is that Alex has brought me out to an area where there's really not a lot of things to run into. You make it look so easy. <laughs> a little bit, little bit of practice, yeah. <laughs> it, it takes a lot longer than a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few decades of practice. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Alex learned about draft horses from his grandfather, Sid Samuel, who was one of the foundation members of the Australian Draft Horse Stud Book Society. It's a true organic way, like you look at what we're doing here, the soil is quite a little bit hard, a bit from the mud sitting on top. We're actually, instead of spraying a chemical over to kill everything, we're just turning it up, uh, naturally killing it. So it's a, it's a pretty beautiful process just working uh, with the animals and you know, you can't get any more organic than what we're doing right here, really. You ready to have a, have a go? I'm really excited, but no, this is like, it's gonna be so different. <laughs> nah, it'll be a little bit different, but you'll, you'll pick it up. As you go along, the aim of the game is to keep this wheel probably on something which has just been scarified. Okay. Um, so, you know, you might have to give it, you know, a little bit of pressure on wheel, which is your, this near side horse. You don't have to pull on them a lot, you just adjust to what feels comfortable. They'll let you know what, what they're happy with, okay. talk with them a little bit, yeah. Right, I get up. Wow, that moment when they first go, it's like everything kind of lifts off. Yeah. You're gonna have to anticipate the length of what's in front of you. Sure. So you can keep them going a little bit, and then you can start turning when you're ready. Yep. Be off. Be off. <laughs> so much rain. Be off. That's okay. You can go around the bit which is already done and line yourself up.
It's so hard to stay straight. You yeah, know, all you got to you got to really anticipate. All right, I'm anticipating a beautiful turn. <laughs> So the trick is keep them straight for a bit. Okay. And then start pulling them around hard. So G off, and you'll slow them right down, slow them right down, and pull them right back. Turn them. Okay, that was a little better. <laughs> You're getting better. Doesn't take much, a little bit of practice. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at my line ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty about it. You can erase it, can't you? Just go back over the top of it. Another one of those life lessons for you. You can learn on the farm. Like, yeah. if you mess it up, just do it again. Yeah, do it again, yeah. <laughs> Australia, every country really, wouldn't, it wouldn't be anywhere without the horse. Right. We wouldn't be uh, where we are without this train draft horse. Um, you know, they did all the major jobs. Uh, which machines do now. It's important that people know, you know, we preserve the past in all aspects. This is how it was done and, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're coming a, a fast pace of life and some things it's, uh, it's nice to slow down a little bit <laughs> um, and do it, do it this way, yeah. Absolutely. All right, Let's see if you can take them off now. Get up, get up. <laughs> My Australian accent isn't good. No, enough. no. All I'm right. Gotta try and like I tell I tell the kids they gotta try and sound like dad. So sound you gotta like really dad. get up, get up, get up, <laughs> get up, get up. All right, I'll have a go. Right, I get up, get up. <laughs> they okay. get they get used to the one voice. <laughs> I mean, the good news is no one can steal your horses. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to have that ride on uh, on Will? Mm -hmm. well, we've had him since he's a foal. He's a good example of a really ideal Australian draft horse. Really, you can see straight coloured. Probably can notice a little bit of the different influences has go, gone into him. He's he's got a bit of Persian and Suffolk lines, so he's you know minimum feather. But yeah, he's certainly done a lot of work and been a lot of places now will has awesome and then i sort of i lost him to her <laughs> she claimed him so i have a feeling you're gonna find that's happening more and yeah, more it does, as they get yeah. older yep. <laughs> it does we had a bit of trouble this hadn't been on a draft horse we have a smaller saddle but i don't know if the girth will fit him oh that's, that's all right <laughs> get out your way breed number 77 go it's been fun doing more of these draft breeds as well. I just love the feeling of these big horses. <laughs> you know, you've just got so much you're sitting on and then like there's just so much horse. <laughs> puts it into perspective after watching him from behind, now you're up on top. Yeah, we're gonna see if we can get the forward motion. Yeah, thing, yeah, right? that might be the hard bit. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh yeah, see, we're already making progress. Okay, Yeah, good boy. Gosh, I just love this feeling. Every horse is so different. I'm really impressed with the mind of this breed, the way that they are when they're being worked, and the fact that he has only been ridden 
by two other people. Talk about representing the breed standard of having a quiet and willing mind. <laughs> Thank you for the ride, sir. On me. <laughs> oh, good boy. Walk, trot, and canner. That's a pretty impressive boy. Uh huh. <laughs> he's also a very large teddy bear. Do you guys think he's going to fit in my suitcase? Yep. But before I head out to meet more Australian breeds, there is something else we need to do. For a versatile horse like Will, you've got to cut your own dinner here, apparently, I'm learning. We're gonna put him on a chaff cutter. So this is um, how we cut the chaff here. It's gonna go into what's called a horse works, which is this device here. So basically he's gonna go walk round and round and um, while he's doing that, he'll, he'll drive the belt and power our chaff cutter. Whoa. what the Australian draft horse was bred to do and they, they do like that work. Bre it's bred into them so they like that purpose. Get up well. This is all cut from the paddock ewe actually. This, this crop here was from the paddock ewe working um, today because everything they came up with a way to use the horse to, to make your life easy. I mean, the equivalent before this, if you didn't have the horse, you had the hand wind, hand wind one, you know? So, like, I always look at all the old machinery we use for cutting hay, and I think at some point this was brand new for somebody. Like, how cool would it have been the day they saw it? It's like getting your iPhone, it was like, look at that. You just don't want to see them in a picture, you know? Yeah. You've got to see them doing what they, they're bred to do. So, yeah. Straight out of my mouth. No, good. <laughs> All right, drive him back for Dad. Within each breed, there are unique stories. Moments of the present, memories of the past, and hopes for the future. So you have trip over. Good job, buddy. Nice work. Thank you all so much for riding along with me and discovering the Australian Draft Horse. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up or share it with a friend who might enjoy it. Happy riding, everyone, and I'll see you at the next breed. <laughs>